Welcome to the deep dive. Today, um, we're going to tackle, you know, the universe's ultimate long distance challenge. Oh, okay. Like, how do we reach those incredibly distant stars and galaxies, but without like rewriting the laws of physics? You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the big question, isn't it? A question that's been on humanity's mind for centuries, really. For sure, for sure. And and thankfully, physics might actually have a few intriguing solutions up its sleeve. Okay, so you're saying there's hope for us base-obsessed Earthlings? I like it. Absolutely. Okay, so our sources today actually point to two potential paths. Okay. So uh, one is relativistic travel, where, you know, we get a little help from Einstein. Right. And then there's something called uh, von Neumann probes, mm -hmm. which are basically these self-replicating robot explorers. Yeah, both both of these approaches, you know, they kind of leverage existing physics yeah. to overcome those limitations of these massive cosmic distances. Right. But And therefore, they also come with a really fascinating twist. Okay, lay it on me. To conquer space, we've got to kind of make a trade-off with time. All right, now you've really got me hooked. So let's start with the Fast and Furious' option. Relativistic travel. This idea is all about getting close to the speed of light. Yeah. And that's where Einstein's theory of special relativity comes into play. Right. It basically, um, it says that the faster you go, the slower time passes for you. Yeah. Compared to someone who's just standing still. Exactly. It's not just some kind of science fiction trickery. Right. This is like a fundamental part of how space time works, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's mind bending, but it's totally within the realm of, of known physics. So what you're saying is like, if I hopped on a spaceship, right? Okay. And it could travel at, let's say like 99% the speed of light, mm -hmm. right? And I zipped across the galaxy, a journey of say, a hundred thousand light years. Okay. It might only feel like a few years to me. That's the, yeah, that's exactly the concept. But, and therefore there's a catch. Okay, there's always a catch. Always a catch. While you're, you know, you're living it up, you're cruising through the cosmos. Right. Time back on earth wouldn't be slowing down. Okay. So for everyone back home, hundreds of thousands of years would have passed. Oh, wow. You'd return to a completely different world, maybe even a different human civilization. Whoa. So it's not just a physical journey, it's like a journey through time too. Yeah. You'd essentially be a time traveler. Totally. Stepping into this future that's like totally disconnected from the one you left behind. Right. Would you take that leap knowing you could never really come back? It's a it's a big question. I mean, it really makes you think, like how much are you willing to give up to see what's out there? It's a question that goes way beyond just physics. Right. It's really about the essence of human connection and belonging. For sure, for sure. Okay. Let's shift gears a little bit to something maybe a little less lonely. Okay. Option two, those mysterious von Neumann probes. All right. Now, they might not be as flashy as warp speed spaceships, but they're just as intriguing. Tell us more about them. So imagine like a robotic explorer, right? Yeah. But it can not only travel these crazy distances, right. but it can also build copies of itself using materials it finds along the way. So like a cosmic 3D printer on a mission. Exactly. These probes, they could like theoretically fan out across the galaxy, replicating themselves as they go, reaching every star system wow. over millions of years, you know? Millions of years, wow. But here's the thing. Since they're robots, they wouldn't experience time the way we do. Right. So a million year voyage might feel like nothing to them, just a normal Tuesday, you know? That's wild. And and get this, this isn't just some far off sci-fi fantasy. We're already talking about sending these tiny little laser powered probes to Proxima Centauri, yeah. which is our closest star neighbor yeah. with the Breakthrough Starshot project. It's pretty amazing. And they could be traveling at like a significant fraction of the speed of light. Yeah, like 20%. It's crazy. I mean, it's mind boggling to think that, you know, maybe within our lifetime, we might see the launch of humanity's first interstellar probes. It truly is groundbreaking. It is. And and it ties into an even bigger mystery. Mm. You know, the Fermi paradox. Yay. That whole, if aliens exist, why haven't we met them? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe von Neumann probes are already out there, mm. like silently observing, collecting data, maybe even influencing civilizations. It's possible. Okay, now we're getting into like serious X-Files territory. Think about it. Mm -hmm. What if these probes aren't just observing? What if they're shaping evolution on other planets? Yeah. Or even like controlling entire civilizations. Maybe some of those UFO sightings people reported just like ancient von Neumann probes malfunctioning after like 
billions of years. It's enough to make you look at the night sky with a whole new sense of wonder and maybe a little bit of paranoia. Definitely. It's a it's a reminder that the universe is a vast and mysterious place, right. full of possibilities that we can barely even imagine. Exactly. Yeah. Before we get uh, too lost in this, this rabbit hole of alien possibilities, yeah. we should probably take a quick break. Okay. If you are loving this deep dive, head over to Cavalli.top. It's a great resource. They've got a treasure trove of like insightful articles and discussions that will like seriously take your mind on a journey even wilder than this one. For sure. Seriously, check it out. It's worth the trip. Definitely. It's a it's a fantastic resource for anyone who's fascinated by space exploration and, and the mysteries of the cosmos. Okay, ready to jump back in? Yeah. Because this cosmic roller coaster is just getting started. Oh yeah, buckle up. So we've been talking about these von Neumann probes, you know, spreading across the galaxy, making copies of themselves as they go. Right. Yep. But um, let's get practical for a second. Okay. Where would they actually get the materials to build all those copies? That's a great question. I mean, space is vast, but it's not exactly like overflowing with Home Depots, right? Exactly, yeah. Asteroids and comets have some resources. But imagine if these probes were like drawn to something a bit more abundant. Oh, okay. Something like, oh, I don't know, Earth's oceans. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Are you suggesting that alien robots could be mining our oceans? Like, right now? It's a it's a possibility. It's, that's a pretty wild thought. It might sound a little out there, but think about it. Okay. Earth's oceans are like full of valuable resources, right? Right. We've got dissolved metals like magnesium and gold, huge fields of manganese nodules on the seafloor, even oil and natural gas deposits. Mm hmm from a resource perspective, Earth's oceans would be a pretty attractive target, you know, for right. a self-replicating probe trying to build more copies of itself. Okay, I'll admit that's a pretty compelling argument. Right. But wouldn't we have noticed something? Wouldn't there be, like, signs of this massive underwater mining operation? Not necessarily, no. Really? Remember, these probes could be unbelievably advanced. Okay. They might be able to, like, mimic natural processes so well that we wouldn't even recognize their activities as artificial. So you're saying there could be ancient alien robots, like, quietly extracting resources from our oceans. It's possible. We'd have absolutely no clue. It's it's possible, yeah. That's both amazing and kind of creepy. It definitely challenges our assumptions about, you know, what's even possible. Yeah. And it raises a really fascinating question. Okay. What if, over billions of years, some of these probes started to malfunction? Oh, okay, interesting. What if their programming got corrupted? Or their systems, like, degraded? Okay, now you're really speaking my language. Right. What would a malfunctioning alien probe even look like? Would it be like some kind of like cosmic glitch in the matrix. Well, imagine a probe that was originally designed to blend in perfectly, right? Okay. To mimic natural processes perfectly. Right. But now, because of some malfunction, yeah. it starts behaving erratically. Probably. You know, it might manipulate matter and energy in ways that seem impossible to us, almost like magic. So you're saying some of those unexplained phenomena we hear about. Yeah. Like UFO sightings, yeah. strange underwater anomalies. Yeah, exactly. Those could be the result of ancient alien probes just glitching out after billions of years. It's a, it's a possibility. I mean, that's a wild theory, but it's not totally outside the realm of possibility. It's definitely an intriguing thought experiment. It highlights how much we still don't know about the universe yeah. and the potential for encountering intelligences that are way older and more advanced than us. This whole conversation is making me look at the ocean with a whole new level of suspicion. But before we uh, spiral too far down this this rabbit hole, yeah, let's bring it back to us humans, right? Okay. Let's say, hypothetically, we do come across an alien probe. Right. Whether it's chilling on the ocean floor or just cruising through interstellar space. Okay. What happens next? Is it take me to your leader's time? or is it something way more complex? That's where things get really interesting. The possibilities are as vast and varied as the universe itself. Okay, so let's start with like the optimistic scenarios. Well, okay. What's the best case scenario for an alien encounter? Right. Do they like share their super advanced technology with us, give us the galactic welcome wagon and a tour of the cosmos? Imagine this. The probe contains a massive library of knowledge yeah. accumulated over millions of years of galactic exploration. 
wow. advanced physics, medicine, maybe even the secrets to clean energy or faster than light travel. That would be amazing. It could be the key to solving some of humanity's greatest challenges, you know, yeah. and ushering in a new era of peace and prosperity. Or maybe they have like a, a galactic database of life forms. Oh, yeah. Including like species that went extinct on Earth millions of years ago. Right. We could bring back dinosaurs. Now you're talking. Right. That would be a game changer for paleontologists. I know. Imagine the scientific breakthroughs we could achieve by studying the DNA of creatures that are long gone from our planet. It would be a revolution in biology. Okay, those are some pretty awesome possibilities. Right. But let's be real for a sec. Not all first contacts are gonna be like a friendly intergalactic potluck, right? Right. What are some of the potential downsides? Yeah. Is there a chance things could go very, very wrong? Well, let's think about it. What if the technology they share isn't, you know, as benevolent as it seems at first? Okay. What if it's some kind of like technological Trojan horse uh -huh. designed to like undermine us oh, wow. in ways we don't even understand, you know? Thanks. Like a virus that infects our entire technological infrastructure. Exactly. Or, or maybe like a technology that seems beneficial at first. Right. But then like ultimately leads us down this path of self-destruction. I've seen that movie. It doesn't end well. Right. Exactly. Or what if the probe isn't even interested in sharing knowledge at all. Okay. What if its whole mission is to control us? Okay. To like prevent us from becoming a threat to some like larger galactic order? So they've just been watching us this whole time. Maybe, yeah. Waiting to see if we pass some kind of cosmic test. Possibly. So instead of a cosmic knowledge download, we get a cosmic slap on the wrist. Yeah, could be. Like, hey, little humans, you're getting a bit too big for your bridges. Right. Time to put you back in your place. I guess that would be a bit of a bummer after all this buildup. It's a it's a sobering thought, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The universe is this vast and unknown place. We yeah. can't assume that every intelligence out there is going to have our best interests at heart. You're right, you're right. But it's also kind of exhilarating. The possibilities are endless. Yeah. Both good and bad. Yeah. Right. And, and that, I think, is what makes this whole topic so fascinating. Cedar. It's like the ultimate what if scenario. Absolutely. It forces us to think beyond our limited perspective to right. confront these big questions about our place in the cosmos. Okay, so we've explored two incredible ways that physics could help us, you know, overcome the universe's crazy vast distances. Relativistic travel, which basically turns us into time travelers. Right. And then the von Neumann probes, which are like these self-replicating robot explorers. Okay. But both come with this like mind-blowing twist. To conquer distance, we got to be willing to sacrifice time. Yeah, it's a trade-off. And who knows what we might find out there, right? Friendly aliens sharing their wisdom. Right. Ancient robots mining our oceans. Or maybe something we haven't even thought of yet. Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of adventures, if you want to keep exploring these mind-blowing concepts, you absolutely have to visit Kivali.top. They've got articles, discussions, all sorts of thought-provoking content that will keep your brain buzzing for days. It's like a playground for space enthusiasts. It's a must-visit for anyone who's ever looked up at the night sky and thought, what else is out there? Couldn't have put it better myself. But here's the real question. What are you willing to give up to explore the cosmos? What price would you pay to unlock the secrets of the universe? That's something to ponder as we wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. And remember, keep looking up and keep wondering. Until next time. And that's a wrap for the Cavalli.top podcast. Thanks for listening.